come you want to work for me, kid? I want to get rich. I hear you're the guy I can do it with. Where'd you hear that? From him. We did some talking. I met him a few times at the Nemo Bar, boss. I figured maybe we could use one like him around here. You bet you can. You talk big, kid. But my operations don't run on talk. What did you ever do? I worked with Lefty Mason for two years, heisting stores. What else? I drove stolen cars to California. They got me on that. I spent a year in a Fed reformatory at Chillicothe. When'd you get out? Six months ago. I was in New York passing queer, but I wasn't getting anywhere. That's why I want to work for you. I want to make the big time. Now, do anything to rate it. I ain't an easy guy to work for, Ames. I do a lot of different things. I didn't say I wanted it easy. I just want the dough. Okay, you start Monday. To all appearances, it was a simple, routine conversation. The hiring of one member of the underworld by another. And yet, out of this meeting between the racketeer, Herb Carey, and the youth, Frank Ames, developed one of the most unusual situations ever faced by this department. And now, in my role as chief of the United States Secret Service, I want to tell you how the hiring of this new man involved the service in a problem which concerned both counterfeiting and murder. This is Treasury File 4826, United States Secret Service. The case of the deadly dilemma. Was 60, 70, 80. You did a nice week's work, kid. <laughs> That's chicken feet. How long are you going to keep me on your lousy numbers collections, anyhow? <laughs> You're making money, ain't you? Yeah, but this kind of dough I used to make rolling drunks. If you don't like it, you could leave. What kind of an answer is that? I'm hungry. You know I'm hungry. Give me a chance to get my teeth into something. Like what? What about the green? Why don't you let me in on that? Look, kid, you've been doing all right with me so far. I like you. Don't spoil it by pressing, eh? Yeah? Yeah, this is Chester. For you, boss, the Ogden dame. Hello. Yeah, I've been waiting for you to make up your mind. What's the answer? Okay, I'll do anything you say. I'll split the dough with you, 50-50. Only you gotta take care of everything. I said I would, didn't I? Now relax. I got a couple of things to take care of downtown, then Chester and me will drop by and see you. Right. She going through with it? Yeah, it looks that way. We gotta find somebody to handle it. Let's get downtown. Oh, wait a minute. You know the code. Get the accounts of the numbers boys up to date. Could I work here? I don't want to carry this around with me. Just don't touch nothing.
the Rivers Paper Company, eh? Well, what's the connection, Dalton? Does Ames think that the Kerry outfit might be getting their paper there? Well, he wasn't sure, sir. He was just reporting on what he found in Kerry's desk and passing it on for what it was worth. He's still having trouble getting information. Well, that's to be expected on an assignment like this. Undercover work takes time. You can't rush it. However, it looks as if we're on the right track. I don't think there's any doubt about that, Chief. Ames has heard plenty of talk in the outfit about a counterfeiting operation, but it seems to be, well, a special setup, a separate unit of Kerry's organization. And he's had no indication so far as to where it might be located or what jobbers are distributing the counterfeit bills? No, sir. The new tens are still showing up in a widely scattered pattern. So far, we haven't been able to pick up any passers. What about the fives? Activity has died down a little. They might be getting ready to print up a new batch. All right, Dalton, keep me informed on all new developments with Ames and run down this lead on the Rivers Paper Company. It may be a good one. Upon investigation by Agent Dalton, the Rivers Paper Company was found to be a legitimate corporation engaged in the manufacture of stationery of all kinds. Dalton obtained samples of the various bonds which the Rivers Company manufactured and sent them on to Washington for analysis. It was here that an important discovery was made. One of the samples was found to be the identical bond number paper used in the counterfeit $10 bills. Upon receipt of this information, Dalton began an immediate investigation of all the companies and individual buyers who had purchased bond numbers XB42 from the Rivers Company in the past six months. And one of them, the Acme Engineering Corporation, proved to be non-existent. Checking with the shipping foreman at the Rivers Company, Dalton then learned that the so-called Acme Corporation had always picked up its own orders with its own truck and its own driver. And after searching through the files of criminals with counterfeiting records, the foreman was able to identify this truck driver as George Troy, an ex-convict whose present whereabouts were unknown. If we're going ahead with a new batch, you'll have to let me know. Keep your shirt on, George. I'll get in touch with you as soon as I've lined up the buyers. Now listen, I'll call you. Right. Who's George? Works for me. Yeah, another one of your operations, huh? Maybe. You're full of them, ain't you? When are you going to start using me on one of these shakes? You keep promising to let me in on one of your counterfeiting deals, but you never do anything about it. How about a little action, huh? That's what I'm saving you for. Action. As a matter of fact, I got a job for you if you could handle it. You make the grade on this one, and you could write your own ticket with me. What's the deal? You know, I ain't never chickened out on you yet, have I? What do you got in mind? I want you to take care of somebody for me. For a thousand bucks. What? You wanted to prove what a hot shot you were. Okay. This is it. You, you mean you want me to rub somebody out? Yeah, that's what I said. What's the matter? Don't you like the idea? I thought you had nerve. Well, sure, but... I ain't exactly my line, Kerry. Shouldn't be too tough to handle if it's done right. Especially for a guy like you that ain't even known around here. Cops wouldn't be on again in a million years. I don't know about that, Kerry. Okay, okay. You got cold feet, say so. I'll get somebody else to handle it. Except this is the end of the line as far as I'm concerned. If you don't do this job for me, you don't work here anymore. Well, now, wait a minute. Now, look, kid. I don't like four flushes. You got something on the ball, you go places with me. If it's just a lot of talk, I don't want you around here. I didn't say that I, I wouldn't do it. It's just that it, it came at me all of a sudden, like, that's all. Uh, give me a chance to think it over, will you? Okay. You got until tomorrow morning. There's your hat. Beat it. Well, it's almost incredible, Dalton. Kerry actually wants Ames to commit a murder for him. He came right out and said so in that many words. He offered him $1,000, and Ames has until tomorrow morning to make up his mind. Either he takes the deal or he doesn't work for Kerry anymore. Well, what's the story? Who does Kerry want killed? Well, he wouldn't say, sir. That's what makes it tough. 
If Ames backs out now, Carrie will probably get somebody else to do the job. And if Ames stays, well, you can see what kind of a spot he's in. Well, I'm afraid he's going to have to stay, Dalton. We still haven't anywhere near enough information to move in on Carrie. And if Ames does pull out now, he'll not only lose all those weeks of work, but somebody will be murdered, and we don't know who that somebody is. All right, Chief, I'll tell Ames he'll have to stay. But in a spot like this, he's sure going to have to walk a tightrope. Well, what's it going to be? Are you in or out? What's the story? Well, I'm here, ain't I? It's going to be in. Good boy, Frankie. I know you had nerve, now this proves it. From now on, you and me are going to get along just fine. Quit soft soaping me, will you? I'm only doing this for one reason, that's the dough. Now, who's this guy you want me to knock off? What's his name? Guy by the name of Ogden. Come on, I'll take you over to his apartment. Introduce you to his wife. There it is. You sure this is a good picture of your husband? I told you it was taken six months ago. What did you guys have to come here for anyhow? I could have sent a picture. Take it easy, Molly. The kid's got to do this thing right. He's got to know what your husband does all day, where he goes. Why don't you just stop talking about it? I don't want to know anything that's going on. I don't even want to know who's doing it. You want the insurance, don't you? That's what you're paying me for, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. Then tell Ames everything he wants to know, where your husband works, when he leaves the house, what time he gets home. He doesn't work. He's been sick for two years now, ever since he got out of jail. All he can do is just sit around the house or go out for a walk, maybe. I gotta do all the work. For two years now, I gotta treat him like a baby. I gotta buy his food and his clothes. Sling hash 12 hours a day so he can live maybe a couple years more. It's a lot to do for a guy you don't even love anymore. How come your husband went to jail? Forging. Forging checks. What difference does it make anyhow? Look, why don't you guys just get out of here and leave me alone? Just tell me when it's all done, will you? How long do you figure it'll take, Frankie? Well, I gotta do this my own way. I ain't gonna just walk out in the street and plug somebody. I gotta pick my own time and place. After all, we're all in on this together. And nobody wants to get cut, so I better do it right. Okay, kid, do it your own way. Only I want it done fast. I want it done real fast. And you still haven't found out anything about this man, George Troy, or the counterfeiting operation, huh? Nothing you could really pin down. Kerry's getting ready to make a new batch of tens. I found out that much. But where or when or who else is in on the deal, I still don't know. In the meantime, I'm sitting on a bomb. Well, stall them as long as you can. But don't get hurt. We'll keep you covered. Why? Give me one excuse why you haven't done it yet. You've been on this thing 10 days now, and all I hear from you is alibis. Look, I'm just as anxious to get it over with as you are. Well, why don't you do something about it? Yesterday, you had something all figured out. Today, you don't like it. Three days ago, it was the same thing. How many times are you going to figure this job before you do it? It ain't that easy, I tell you. He don't go out at night. And all day long, he sits around the house reading. Or... OK, OK, stop giving me excuses. I told you I wanted this job done real fast. Now, go on over to Molly's place, figure something out. She said she's got an idea for you. Molly's got an idea? You heard me. Go on over there. She's waiting for you up on the roof. comes up here all the time, especially these hot summer nights. It's got this birdhouse up here. Comes up to leave food for the birds. Sometimes you don't get back to the apartment until 10, 11 o'clock. So what do you want me to do, shoot them up here? Where anybody on these other roofs can hear the shot and come a-running? I never make it down to the street. I didn't say you had to shoot him. It's six flights up. I don't get it. Oh, for crying out loud, do I have to tell you everything? You were supposed to do this all by yourself. Now I gotta show you every move. 
Maybe I figured you didn't want it done. Maybe I figured I was doing you a favor. Well, I do, I do. I just can't stand this waiting around anymore. Seeing him every day, having him look at me like I was somebody that was helping him. They might go through with it, Molly. How are you gonna feel after it's all over? Leave me alone. I want it this way. Look, I want some kind of a life. Every time you put it off, I... Look, look, the guy is sick. He gets dizzy spells. All he'd have to do is come up here some night when nobody's around and... Well, it could happen like that, couldn't it? Well, all you'd have to do is just... With just one little push. Molly, what are you doing up here? I thought you were at the movies. Well, I, um... I changed my mind. Uh, Seth, this here's a friend of mine from the diner. His name is Frankie. Pleased to meet you, Frankie. Nice up here, ain't it? Yeah. I come up here to feed the birds. I've got a whole family of robins in here. Little ones are just learning to fly. Well, I gotta go, Molly. Well, what's your rush? Why don't you stay up here and talk to Seth a while? He'd like some company, wouldn't you, Seth? Sure, sure. I don't get much chance to talk to people. Why don't you stay up here, Molly? I hardly see you anymore. Well, uh, I'm awful tired, Seth. I, I think I'll go get ready for bed. Nice night, ain't it? Yeah, great. 24 hours is all I'm giving you. 24 more hours to do this job or else you're pulling out of here. And you better pull out of here fast. I don't know why you're getting so excited, Curry. I couldn't take a chance last night. There were three guys on a roof right across the street, just standing there and watching. If I'd have pushed the guy, they would have seen the whole thing. Just 24 hours, Frankie, and I ain't fooled. Answer that. Hello? Yeah, yeah, Chester, he's here. What are you bothering me for? I thought I told Joyce not to call me. Will you call him back and tell him I'll let him know? Yeah, he's in room 261. What's up? None of your business. Nothing's your business until Arden gets it, you understand? Just remember, Frankie, 24 hours. On the hunch that the name George, which Kerry had mentioned on the phone, might possibly be George Troy, the truck driver who had picked up the paper supplies from the Rivers Paper Company, Ames telephoned Agent Dalton and notified him that George Troy might possibly be staying at a local hotel in room 261, the room which Kerry had spoken of. Immediately, Dalton went to work, calling every listed hotel in the local area and at each, asking for room 261, and a man named Georgie. Yeah? Yeah, this is Georgie. Who are you? It's Frankie Ames, Georgie. I joined Carrie's outfit about six weeks ago. Didn't the boss ever mention my name to you? Well, don't make no difference. Having discovered the whereabouts of George Troy, Agent Dalton immediately assigned two men to keep Troy under constant surveillance. Other agents of the Secret Service were posted at the Rivers Paper Company, where Troy ordered a new supply of paper after talking with Agent Dalton. Hello. Hello, Ames. Dalton. It worked. We located Troy at the Sussex Hotel, and we've got him under surveillance. You better watch your step. There may be trouble. Okay, thanks. Who was that? It was just a friend of mine, some guy I was in stir with. What's the idea of the gun, Kerry? The way I come barging in here a few minutes ago, you think I've blown up City Hall? Maybe you have. Let's go, kid. Did you want to tell me what's up? Sure. George Troy called. Says you phoned him. I don't get it. I didn't call any George Troy. I don't even know the guy. It don't make sense. Don't make sense to me either, except for one thing. 
You're trying to set up some kind of a trap. For who? What kind of a guy do you think I am? You really want to know? I think you're a cop. What? It figures, Frankie. The way you're trying to get the load down on my green operations. The way you're stalling on the murder. The way you're always nosing around. I think you're a cop. That's why I'm here. I'm going to make you go through with the murder. Then I'll know. Now, wait a minute, Kerry. I, I, I ain't got any minutes to spare. We're going over to Molly's place, up on the roof, wait for her husband. Then we're going to find out whether you're a cop or not. We'll find out in two minutes. Get moving. He ain't coming up, I'm telling you. We're going to stand here all night for nothing. All right, so we'll stand. You just stay where you are. Molly told me on the phone he never misses. What do I care what it sounded like to you? I got a right to go where I please, haven't I? Oh, sure, Molly, sure. Only I, I just get a little lonely for you, that's all. You'll be all right, Seth. Why don't you go upstairs on the roof? Feed your birds. You're a little late tonight, aren't you? Yes, I guess I am. Well, I'll be seeing you, Seth. I'll be back in a couple of days. Molly, anything wrong? You look so, uh, oh, I don't know, funny. Well, Seth, I gotta go. Well, Molly, ain't you gonna kiss me goodbye? Sure, sure I'll kiss you goodbye. Goodbye, Seth. Goodbye, Molly. Okay, kid, do your stuff. Run over, give him a shove. Well, wait till he gets settled. No, no, I said. It's either you or him. One, make it fast. Oh, oh, hello, Frankie. What brings you up here? Oh, I just thought I'd come up and get some night air. Fine. Great. Come on. Let you down and talk a while. Uh, I don't like to sit so near the edge. Besides, I, I, I'd like to look at your birds, huh? Sure, sure. The robins have all gone now. In a couple of weeks, they'll be making nests of their own. Funny, ain't it, how they stick together when they're real young? Oh. Pick them up and throw them over the ledge. I said, pick them up and throw them over the ledge, or do you want me to give it to you? Come on, move. Move. Over. I said, over. You were right, Kerry. I am a cop. And from now on, I'm going to behave like one. Now, come on, get up on your feet. You're under arrest. This unusual case had an unhappy ending for all parties concerned, including Agent Ames, who tried so desperately to save Seth Ogden's life. The blow which Ogden received on the roof that night was not fatal in itself, but his health was so poor he never recovered from it. Both Herb Carey and Molly Ogden were convicted of attempted murder and are serving sentences on the state penitentiary. As for the other members of Carey's gang, George Troy and Chester Palmer were picked up when they tried to avoid arrest by fleeing to the gang's hideout and upstate farmhouse with a counterfeit plate, several thousand dollars in counterfeit bills, and four other members of the gang were also picked up.